So I was gone over the weekend. Um, Elvin bought Hadassah a new hat and she brought it to me in the garden and said, try this. It really helps shade your eyes. So here I am in Hadassah's cowboy hat. But while I was gone, um, the cows got out one night and they headed to the garden because the sweet corn is tasseling and it just smells really sweet. And I think they smelled that and that's where they wanted to go. Anyway, in their journey to the sweet corn, they knocked down a pepper plant. Um, so I, the pepper plant was broken off, but it wasn't completely, like the peppers aren't wilted yet. So I found four peppers and the cabbage is ready. And so we're gonna make pepper cabbage, which is like a pickled cabbage. And oh, we will eat one. that all winter long. That is not a spicy pepper, Kendrick but I do want to use it to make pepper cabbage. So when we make pepper cabbage, I like to have red peppers just because it adds color, but <clears throat> I'm gonna make this batch with the yellow peppers. So Hadass is digging the carrots and I'm gonna go get the cabbage. And I wanted to show you how I said cabbage does not give more heads but look at these cute little babies. Those are little baby cabbages where I cut one. And some of this broccoli needs to be taken off. Cabbage. I just want to break it. I just want to slam it on the ground. I know, but I'll egg that little baby. I want to yeah. it. Yeah. I just want it on the ground. I just want to help it. Um, I'll do this to plug one, plug it in, then I can fill it up with water. Well, that's just our rinse tub, so so I'm I've got the beginnings of my canning outdoor canning kitchen set up out here. Um, we'll add things to it as we go, but for today we just need the wash tubs and a table. Harrison is scrubbing the carrots. As a general rule of thumb, for um, one recipe of pepper cabbage, you need a head of cabbage, one pepper, one onion, and one carrot. A small onion. A big one? So this is approximately the equivalent of one recipe of pepper cabbage. So you have one head of cabbage, one pepper, a large carrot, but my carrots are still little, so I'm using three, and a small onion. So I've got all my vegetables cut. I cut my peppers, all my cabbage, my carrots are scrubbed and cut, and I've got my onions cut. And this is my what I use instead of a food processor because it takes up less room than a humongous food processor, and I don't have a very big kitchen. So um, I'm gonna. This is a vintage one, and it folds together really nice, and it comes apart. So. This is all the storage room that it takes. And I'll try and link, they make newer models of this and I'll see if I can find one to link for you. But this is what I use and I know it would be faster to use a food processor, but this is how I've been managing. So now that I have my cabbage and carrots and onions and peppers all shredded, we're gonna add one teaspoon per recipe. One teaspoon of salt per recipe. So I had three heads of cabbage, so I used three teaspoons of salt. 
you're just gonna mix it all together real well. So now that we have all the veggies salted, we are going to set it in the refrigerator and the, we're gonna let the salt work on pulling the water out of the cabbage and also crisping up the cabbage. So that's the two reasons we soak it in salt. Um, I've left it anywhere from three hours to overnight. Um, my plan for today is to, it's about lunchtime now, to let it set until tonight and then um, finish it up. But I usually judge it by how much water is, has come up beside the cabbage. Um, and if there's not a lot of water, I might add a little more salt and let it set for a couple more hours. Um, but I'll document that as I go. So the cleanup crew is here. And you can clearly see why I prefer to do this outdoors. And I do cut the core out of my cabbages. I don't know if it's absolutely necessary, but I have plenty of cabbage and I don't really feel like I need that core. So this coleslaw has been in the refrigerator for about four hours and you can see how there's water that has accumulated in the bottom. So I'm going to dish some out because I want to make some creamy coleslaw, fresh coleslaw for our supper. And then we are going to can the rest. So the rest of it, this we're just going to put in this strainer and strain all the salt water off of it. So this is my vinegar and sugar mixture that I've boiled together. Vinegar strong. <coughs> so now I'm just gonna fill each of these jars with the vinegar mixture. So then I just take a utensil, a knife or a fork, and make sure you work all the bubbles out. And I make sure the all the cabbage is under the brine. Is this the one that needs more? Mm -hmm. And I add some more brine if I need to. So then, of course, we're going 
to wipe all the rims. This has turned into such a pretty purple color. I'm anxious to see what it will look like after it's canned. I am using the Four Jars brand lids and rings today and I'm going to put my affiliate link in the description. I'm really, um, their lids are very heavy duty and I'm very happy to have some new rings as well. So we wiped every jar. So now we're gonna turn the lids and the rings on and we're not gonna turn them tight. We are just gonna turn them snug. Eleven pint jars. I fit eleven pint jars into my hot water bath, and I cannot use this when I use pints. But since it's just a fifteen-minute water bath, I'm not too worried about them sitting down there on that hot bottom. I'm gonna fill the water up until just below the rings. And we're gonna hot water bath this for 15 minutes. simply a wire hanger that we have bent open and it hooks together and that is how we store our pan rings and it goes on a hook um, in the cellar steps. is last year's pepper cabbage that I canned last year. Um, obviously I didn't have any purple cabbage last year because this is what it looks like. Um, and I also added some celery seed in last year so there's little black seeds in there. This is this year's. Um, I do not think the flavor will be any different but we also we let this set for a good month before we um, open any jars because with pickling vegetables it takes a while for the flavor to um, really get into your vegetables. So one of the ways, 
We normally just eat it just like this. Um, and the Mennonites and Amish are like traditionally, they eat a lot of pickled vegetables with their, you know, meat and potatoes. Um, so we eat it like this, but one of the ways, other ways that we use it is that we strain it. So we strain all of the, the pickling juice off. And I usually let it sit for a couple hours um, like this. So after you've strained off all the pickling juice, I add some mayonnaise and we will then have a more creamy coleslaw to go with any winter dish. And the cabbage actually stays very nice and crunchy. So there's that beautiful texture to add to your winter dishes as well. There you go, there you have a beautiful, um, delicious home canned coleslaw for all winter long. Careful, Harrison. Harrison. Is that all of them? Yeah. Okay, so what would you get the last? Slowly filling up our two. shelves, aren't we? These are the last two. All right. Don't push them off the back. I'll get that one. 